it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making this lovely little lantern here. Now when we were in Egypt we saw lots of lovely lanterns I have to say like copper ones and metal ones um, but of course yes I wanted to bring one home but unfortunately we did not have the space in our suitcase and then I thought well maybe I could crochet one. So here we are I have my lantern. So I hope you will enjoy making this. It's a little bit different from what we normally make but you know I was inspired by my holiday. So let me show you what you need for this. So to start with of course you will need scissors, your hook that you usually use for your yarn and a darning needle. I am also using a wooden Hoop. Now this one is about 5 inches or 13 centimeters. The one I used in my original lantern was 6 inches or 15 centimeters. You will also need some of the pom-poms that I made in the previous video and also what I used for my lights are these lights here that I bought from IKEA. I bought them a while ago so I don't know whether they have the same ones but to be honest, you don't see them, so any uh, little lights like this would work. Look, they light up with batteries. So I hope you will be able to find something like this or something similar that you could put in there. So really, you could make this around any size hoop you want. All you need is to make sure that your stitches are in a multiple of eight. Okay, so let's get started. Make your slip knot, insert your hook, and this is a little bit awkward to start with, but I'm sure you'll soon get the hang of it. So you have to sort of work around your hoop here, okay? So, yeah, <laughs> it's hard to explain. So hold your yarn above the hoop, then with your hook you go under, you go and get the yarn, bring it around the hoop and then do your single crochet movement. You need to fill the hoop nicely but you don't want to overcrowd it so that your crochet fabric here is too much. So you need a multiple of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let me do one more and eight. So that looks nice. So that's one multiple and my strands are down here and I think they're lying there quite nicely. So have them lying like that and just continue going around your hoop. Now the thing is I say you can use you know, whatever size hoop you want, of course, you have got to make sure that you do this in groups of eight. So you might want to then shuffle them a little bit closer together or spread them out a little bit to sort of accommodate for the end of your hoop to still have your multiple of eight, but I wouldn't squash them up completely, okay? So make sure you uh, still have them like this. So I'm going to continue onto my hoop here and I will let you know how many I have been able to do. So I have now done 64 single crochets around my hoop. In my bigger one, I did 72. So that 72 had a repeat of nine times eight. This one is a repeat of eight times eight. So we're just going to close the round by doing a simple slip stitch. There we go. Now we're going to do a single crochet. So let's just do a chain first, then go under the same V to do your single crochet. That's fine. There we go. Okay, now we are going to chain five. One, two, three, four and five. And of course with that hoop it's a little bit awkward but it will be fine. Now we're skipping three V, so one, two, three and working in the fourth we are going to do a single crochet. 
and this is what you're going to repeat all along your round here. So one, two, three, four and five, skip three, one, two, three, single crochet under the fourth V. We'll see you at the end of the round. <laughs> of my round and there are three stitches left so I'm going to go under the single crochet and do a slip stitch and I have 16 loops so that is double the amount of my multiple so that has ended our round we are going to do a couple of slip stitches to get us to the correct place for the next round that we are going to be doing so just try and get into the chains to make your slip stitches. I've done two and you sort of need to be about in the middle of the next loop. So here we are. So I'm going to chain one, do a single crochet around that loop and that has now brought me to the middle of that loop. And now I'm going to do a chain three, one, two and three, then Around the next loop, I'm going to do five trebles. So that means you're going to yarn over twice, go around the next loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we're going to do five of those. So that is the second one. So each time you yarn over twice, And that is the fifth one. There we go. See? And now we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And we go to the next loop and we do a single crochet. So this is what we have created now. And this is our repeat. So after the single crochet, you do a one, two, three chains then into the next loop you're going to do your five treble crochets and i know it's awkward working with that wooden hoop hanging off your work there but there we go this is what we are creating <laughs> then you do one two, three chains and a single crochet around the next loop. There we go. And this is how you are going to complete your whole round. Mm -hmm. So from your 16 loops, you have now created your um, multiple again so eight clusters of five trebles and now i am here to finish my round so here into that single crochet i go for a slip stitch there we go and that is the end of the round now i'm going to change colors so i'm going to cut off this yarn voila and I'm going to take another color. So now we're going to change color. So I'm going to make my slip knot ready to use. Insert your hook. And we're going to get started with um, the first row of our repeat. So from now on, it's a two row repeat. And we are going to place a single crochet right after a cluster of five trebles. So if you place it here, then it will be easier later on for starting our second round, okay? So place your single crochet right after your cluster. Then you do five chains, two, three, four, and five. And then you place your single crochet right before the cluster. Then one, two, three, four, and five. Then you place your single crochet right after the cluster. 
one, two, three, four, five, and then you place your single crochet right before the next cluster. And this is how you are going to continue doing your chain fives and placing your single crochets right in front and right behind the cluster of five trebles. I will see you at the end of the round. <laughs> So I've made it to the end of my round. I have now got 16 loops and in the second round once again we will have the eight clusters that we make. So it goes between the double of our amount of multiple to the amount of the multiple. So now to finish our round we go under the V of that first single crochet and we do a slip stitch. There we go. Now we need to be in the middle of this chain here so we're going to do a little trick of doing two slip stitches into the chain so wherever you can get in that's fine then you do a chain and a single crochet around the chain and now you're going to do one two three and then here we have the location for our treble crochet shell so yarn over twice and place your treble crochets around the chain and we are not offsetting these so all the shells will be on top of one another and all the single crochets here will be on top of one another as well and they will make crosses and I've done it like that so the light can come through easily there so four and then here for the fifth treble crochet then we do our chain three, go to the next loop, do your single crochet, one, two, three, and then off we go doing our trebles again. And I have to say, I really loved doing this little pattern. It was easy to remember what to do because of course it's a direct repeat. So first the round of chains, making your loops, then the round of treble shells, and the chain threes with the single crochets. There we go. And so this is how you continue for however many rounds you want to do in however many colors you want to do them. So as you can probably tell, I am using my leftovers from my Jewels of the Nile Cal yarn pack. So here, this is my bigger lantern that I am making. This is the one that I'm showing you in the beginning of the video so I will finish it together with you here. So now I'm going to do another round of the antique apricot loops and then I will be attaching my tassels to them. So now it's time to attach our Nubian tassels to our lantern and I'm going to do that where the crosses are. So below that around the chain space here I am just going to tie my tassel on using the strings that are at the top of the tassel. I'm just going to do a double knot like this. Then here, put these ends on our darning needle and push them into the head and into the body of the tassel. There we go. And we'll just pull that through, voila. Now these ends are a little bit too long so I'm just going to cut them off a little bit and then just push them into the body of the tassel. There we go. So I'm going to do the other two and look at that. These tassels of course the weight of them will ensure that our lantern hangs down nicely. Okay so now to attach the lights. So I have undone the lights a little bit and I have sort of wound them like this so I have them all coming past here. Here I have two chains of about 50 centimeters length so I've put those in there so the lights are wrapped around those chains and they're just hanging down like this. So they'll be going into the lantern like this and then here these chains I'm going to put them like this so through a hole here and then sort of straight across through one of the loops here. So I can pull that like this. And then here, 
through here. I'm just trying to keep it simple, you see. And then there, oh, there's Layla. <laughs> right, so now we have a cross. And so the lights are hanging off that cross. But of course, here we have our battery pack and that's quite heavy. So I have attached it on the side just by uh, wrapping around some yarn and just tying it really tightly. And so my lights are suspended around the cross of my chain there. And yeah, I think it's a really lovely effect. So now we are going to be tying all our ends together and then of course from here you can tie another tie wherever it is that you need to um, attach this on but I'm going to just keep it to this so let's take a look at it in the dark <laughs> hope you like this project and I hope you consider making it. Thank you very much for watching but also I would like to ask please share this video with people who might be interested in making this project as well. I would love to teach them and also show them the rest of my channel because there's so many other videos that I would love for them to try out. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!